right? Hey, everybody, we got people coming in. I've got dogs that are going crazy in the background. <laughs> we all know how that goes. We're so glad to have all of you here. Woo! We're here with our friends at Logitech. And we're going to talk about empowering teachers as content creators. We're super excited to get started with that conversation. Just a couple housekeeping things before we get started. We are going, I'm going to be watching the chat throughout the conversation for any questions that come up. We have a QA and a at the end, so if we don't get to, uh, to your questions throughout the presentation, I'll make sure to bring them up at the end. Also at the end, we're going to have an exit survey. That's our way of hearing from you that you're interested in your coffee, which I know we're all interested in. It's pumpkin spice season. I know I want, I want my Starbucks gift card. So yeah, so just stick around to do that exit survey at the end to kind of tell us that you want your gift card. Otherwise, thank you all so much for being here. And I'm going to hand it over to our presenters. Yeah. Uh, is it okay if I jump in here, Kate, you think? Yep, that's you. Awesome. Well, um, greetings, everyone from the Lexington Airport. I'm sorry. I, I, I wish I had a little bit better um, uh, ambiance for us, but I am en route uh, to Louisiana. And so I'm joining you all from the airport. But this is a, kind of the cool thing about this uh webinar is that so many of these powerful content creation tools are available to us even on the go and so we're going to have a lot of fun today we're going to talk about how to empower educators to be content creators and the timing for this is just so interesting i'm going to tell a little bit of a story here at the beginning and then i'm going to kick it off uh, for carolyn to take this presentation um the rest of the way for us but my dad used to always tell me josh you always have to be really careful about making sure that you're putting in good quality things if you're expecting good quality work back in return. And it's this idea of sowing and reaping and or this law of reciprocity that shows up in so much of our culture. And um, I remember complaining to him one time, just saying like, God, you know, um, dad, I just really feel like my students aren't giving me the, their, their best effort and stuff like this. And we sat and talked, my dad's not even an educator, but he imparted something so meaningful to me. He was like, Josh, I really think that you can step up your game in terms of how you're presenting your content to your students and watch and see how your students present information back to you. And he was right. And so that's one of the things that I'm really passionate about. And I'm excited that we can come today and talk about how to create rich, good quality content from a teacher's perspective. Um, my best friend in the world sent me a link this morning and said, you have to watch this. We're doing a, a Veterans Day presentation uh, at our school. And she used a little, uh, a little Mevo camera, uh, which we're gonna talk about more later, um, to live stream this presentation from the school. And to watch it, it looked like there were three or four different cameras in place to do this, but it was all filmed from one camera and a live stream and just made it so nice. And so that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. And that's what I think um, we can um, talk about today, unpack some of these things. Carolyn, I'm going to ask you to jump in here and um, take the lead on this. Oh, I should have introduced myself. I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, my name is Josh. For those of you who don't, I feel like I know some of you. Um, but uh, in case we haven't met, my name is Josh um, from Fera. I'm the Director of Education Initiatives. And Carolyn um, from Logitech, jump in here, Carolyn, and let's, uh, let's get this party started. I am so excited to get this party started. And thanks, Josh. My name is Carolyn Gluth. Um, I am the head of education for North America at Logitech. So Logitech is a fun company. We have lots of cool products, lots of fun brands. Um, some of the brands that we're actually going to cover today are part and family of Logitech. But we're really going to talk to you a little bit more about the content aspect of it, because now that I work at Logitech, I've worked here for about four years now. I feel like I'm a content creation expert. I've even picked up the TikTok. Oh, wait, no, it's just TikTok, right? It's not the TikTok now. For us old people over here, we're still doing it. But Josh, your story reminded me of something really cool because one of the things that we're really going to start talking a little bit about is how to engage the community with content creation. And your Veterans Day story reminded me my kids are doing a virtual grandparents day. So because grandparents are all over the country, they are now bringing the grandparents in virtually so they can see the kids do the recital and do their songs and all that fun stuff. So really great ways and things to take away from our the 
the, the ideas that we can do for content creation and, and creating just an environment that allows it more of a community inclusivity. So let's get this kicked off. Um, we're going to talk about the rise of digital content creation in education. We're going to, my favorite section is two, so hang on for two, and that is the perfect setup of endless top possibilities, and we'll talk a little bit to actual teachers using the product to get a little uh, feel of what they're using and how they're using it equipping teachers with the right tools. So what do they need to get started? Um, and then discussion with Trafera's trials program and the digital training experts. So let's get this kicked off with the rise of digital content in education. Um, we were put in a very unique situation with COVID where a lot of teachers had started really formatting their education to um, include content, whether it's watching a video as homework or watching a video in class to really focus and impact um, that specific lesson plan. But then we came to really wanting to discuss three main points for digital content and what that enables. First one is going to be flipped learning. Um, the second one will be the student and teacher creativity. So how teachers are creating content, we'll get to see that, but also how students can also interact with creativity and then individualized instruction. The first one, flipped learning, and I want to kind of set the groundwork here. For us, flipped learning is where the instruction is recorded uh, and it can be watched at home, where and the actual practice or examples or hands-on materials are done in the classroom. So instead of having to go do a homework assignment and filling out things, that's actually done in the classroom, more of a hands-on experiment type of scenario, and the lecture is delivered virtually. This is really key for multiple reasons, and it's really been very, very well received because, well, let's be honest, about 65% of us are visual learners. So we can take content in at different levels when we're seeing it visually and personally. The second thing, which is really important for me, is that my child, if they're having issues absorbing that content, don't, doesn't have to have the teacher repeat themselves multiple times. They can actually watch the video multiple times or go to specific sections that they were having trouble with. The other reason for me and why it's really super important is because I don't remember third grade social studies. I don't remember it. I'm sorry. But if I get to watch that with my child, now I can take that lesson and help interpret that for them. Something that could be more of a real use case or life, real life scenario for him or my kids. So it's a, it's a way for it's, for parents to learn too. Um, but also we do love the fact that you could have more of that engagement in class. Now, remember there are a lot of students that are introverts. FYI, I have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old and I use them in a lot of my examples. And you're probably thinking, Carolyn, there's no way you possibly have an introverted child. I know, because I'm such the extrovert, but it's true. I do. My eight-year-old is very introverted and he is not going to go into a, into a regular classroom and raise his hand and ask all the questions. But with a flipped classroom, he now has the ability to have a dialogue with the teacher and ask those questions that he would not normally be comfortable asking in an in-person classroom. So it opens the door for the teachers to really see what type of questions or what kind of struggles each individual student is facing without having to place them in front of an entire uh, group of their peers. Just a little bit more of a comfort level for those introverts. So that's flipped learning. Hopefully you had a chance to read those slides. There's some great statistics and numbers in there, but then we're gonna move over to that student and teacher creativity. Keeping kids engaged is so hard, but you're going to see a couple of examples where Lauren is able to take fun activities and keep them engaged and keep them on the edge of their seats and the adults as well. When you're actually able to create the content that your children are seeing either in class, remotely, on their own time, whatever that looks like, or for extra reinforcements. Say, okay, we reviewed this in class today. We're going to take our test. It's going to cover the following. If you need to review, here are your videos really great content that we're going to see there. Um, but it's also for students too. Now, when I was young, we had something called a library. 
now they call them innovation stations. Now all <laughs> these kids have things with virtual reality. They have esports labs. They have the ability to do 3D printing. All of these things are now with the library encompassing this uh, for the students. And I think that's amazing. And it gives them the capability of creating their own content and working it into a curriculum as well. Again, another example of my eight-year-old, he had summer reading. He had to read three to four books and complete different assignments due on the first day of school. And one of the assignments he chose, much to my chagrin, was we're going to tell a, a story. So we're going to take your family. You're going to take your family and you are going to dress up in character. Yes, I did this. And you are going to do a three to five minute synopsis of your story. So thank goodness I work at Logitech. We started the film role uh, and we absolutely nailed it. Thank you very much. Um, and we told the synopsis and turned that in. So that was their uh, student creativity where we that was actually an assignment from his school and we have continued ways to integrate content creative or content creativity for students and teachers in curriculum so lots of great things there then moving on to individual instruction i think this one's really important since a lot of um a lot of dollars are actually being placed to tutoring and online tutoring or individualized instruction so that we can do a lot of level setting um, so a lot of things that can help with that are being able to be heard appropriately and being able to be seen appropriately. So having the necessary product or um, individualized instruction rolled out to a school district is going to be very important so that a lot of the children that may be struggling, my kiddo was killing math, did a great job, way above grade level, however, coming into this year, really was suffering with spelling. So we had a lot of individualized instruction to help him get caught up to where he needed to be at that third grade level. So great um, for individualized instruction as well. But now I think it's time where we can really talk about some of the, the setups and the possibilities in the teacher use case scenario. Yeah, so I'll jump in here for this a little bit, Carolyn, if that's okay. So um, one of the things that I'm most proud of at Trafera is a program that we run and operate called Trails. And so we, how it works is we partner with teachers across the U.S. Um, who are very talented and have skills that can, um, that they can write curriculum for us. And we have empowered them with um, some tools from Logitech to help aid in this process. And so while they're writing lesson plans for us, they can leverage these technologies uh, to create this rich and meaningful content. And so we have a few people on the call. I, I was looking for Kim. I don't know if Kim showed up. Kim, if you're here, feel free to unmute. I would like to hear from you. I didn't see you on necessarily. Um, if Kim doesn't show, um, Lauren, um, I know that you've created some things. Um, Lauren, can you unmute and share a little bit of about how you use Logitech uh, StreamCam? Sure, absolutely. Hi, I'm Lauren. I was a science teacher for middle schoolers for the last three years, and I'm now writing some science and Spanish content for trails that Josh was just talking about. Um, so here are some clips of a few of the lessons I've created for trails, which were super cool because I got to use one of the Logitech to fill in smart experiments. I was just starting to excited about what they're going to do and see what it's going to look like. And then we equip them with the content, procedures, materials um, that they're going to need in order to do this in their own classroom or home or whatever. Um, Lauren, I might, um, I might jump I love in it more. as a teacher, especially since I treat my classes for the next year, it's in front of me somehow, and I love to have this little camera. Yeah, no, I was going to see if I, yeah, yeah go ahead, no, I was sorry. just going to see if I could jump in just for a moment, because I, um, a little bit of your, the sounds breaking up, just I think maybe due to 
a connection issue, but I wonder, could we play a section of maybe the video? Um, yeah, one of the, yeah, we don't have to play the whole thing. I just want people to be able to see, get a feel for how we're using these in trails. Hi. Welcome to today's experiment, up, up, and away. I'm excited you're here. Today, we are going to see how a chemical change can inflate this balloon without us really having to do much work at all. Here we go. The first thing you need to do is gather your supplies. You'll need 500 milliliters of warm water. And let's just pause that right there, Carolyn, for just a moment. Um, and Lauren, is this... This is set up using um, the Logitech StreamCam Pro. Is that correct? Yep, exactly. Okay, fantastic. Let's go to that next slide because we did use a Logitech uh, Blue Mic too that I wanted to show one of our content creators. Yeah, go ahead and hit that button there. This is my favorite. Tom Treferatops recognizes his strengths. Written and narrated by Anna Hanrahan. I'll clean my meadow, wash the dishes, cut the grass, weed the garden, and brush my horns every day without you asking. Just please don't make me go to school, pleaded Tom from under his blankets. You see, Tom is a Triferatops. A Triferatops is like a Triceratops, but a little bit different. And being a little bit different creates some worries for Tom. So again, this is another example of similar to Lauren's, how we are using uh, teacher created content to make the things from, you know, their own creative space in their mind that come alive, come alive and, you know, can can function as an inspiration um, for students. Um, I, I don't know how much more time we have to talk about this, but I just wanted to point out that I am actually on a blue microphone right now that I've found to be a really good tool for me. Um, he turned off his microphone in the meantime. <laughs> but I think really the cool things around this is that we're in such a really high impact world. We have to really capture the attention of the students. How do we do that? It's becoming a little bit more um, adaptive to what they're interested in doing. And it's the podcasts, it's the YouTubes and how we can create the content that at a more educational level. I think this is a really good example of two. I want to continue learning about Tom Tracer Tracer Traferatops, and I definitely want to go back and do that experiment with my kids. You can pause, you can stop, you can go backwards and forwards. If you miss a step, you can rewind. This isn't a live stream where it's you're trying to keep up. These are things that you can do with your kids at home. These are things that you can continue to build lesson plans off of, and they're able to leverage year after year. This is a lesson plan that you guys are formulating now that can be absolutely elevated in years to come. And I just love that methodology that you can build upon this. This isn't one video this year and maybe just one video for the rest. It's, it can become a series and a story and built upon um, throughout multiple years. So I, I just, I think this is a really great use case. And I think Anna's on. Anna, are you on? I am. Hi, everyone. Hi, Anna. I loved your story. It was amazing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Just like Josh, I'm in the airport right now as well. I'm in one in central Illinois, so I'm kind of oh. on the move as well. <laughs> well, thank you so much for recording Tom Traferatops on your Blue microphone. How did you find the experience with Blue or just creating the content altogether? Was there a software program you used? Was there a way that you recorded this that worked best? Yes, I actually use um, the Audacity program, which is free download, and it's just amazing using the blue microphone. I, I tried to record it first without it. I didn't have the microphone yet, and then I re-recorded it with that, and just the difference in the sound quality was extremely noticeable, <laughs> so it worked oh, out really well. That's awesome. That's super fun. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciated that. Now, did you write Tom 
Triferatops? I did. Yep. Kate came up with the uh, character, Tom Triferatops, and he's been kind of the uh, Trifera mascot for a few months now. And we uh, took it and I had the opportunity to write a children's book and that was our first one. And we actually have the second one in the pipeline as well. So it's a really fun and exciting opportunity for me to be able to do that. Very cool. Well, thank you for joining us from the airport. It's amazing. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I love seeing your use case. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Josh, are you able to come back? Nope. <laughs> well, some of the other ideas that Josh and his team put together were demonstrating facial nuances in language and education. So being able to see the interaction with the student that you are um, doing a uh, in instructional a lesson with individualized instruction, always really super important. Um, capturing video and audio for virtual field trips with uh, anywhere, uh, go anywhere equipment. So I get a lot of questions. We bought all this equipment for uh, virtual learning. How do we repurpose that virtual or how do we repurpose that equipment or how do we put it into different use cases in existing environments? This is exactly how you do it. It's leveraging that content creation mentality and virtual field trips. My favorite virtual field trip that my child has been able to take was with Jane Goodall. I wanted, I wanted to go to school that day so I could be experiencing that. They got to ask questions, interact. They took her, um, she took them on a tour, I believe it was of the San Diego Zoo, um, talked a lot about conservation and their part. Um, but what a great experience to be able to interface with Jane Goodall. Now, they're not, Jane's, She's been to Austin, Texas, but she isn't going to do a tour of the schools, but they are able to take advantage of that kind of stuff through virtual field trips, um, just by repurposing some of the virtual equipment that they used from last year. And then the other thing was they got to do um, a one on one with the International Space Station as well. So there's so many things out there to build into your curriculum when it's talking about virtual field trips or how to speak to certain individuals or play a video for them. So that's really great. Um, creating brain breaks, mindful exercises to promote student mental well-being. Uh, so I love this one. I think brain pop is something that my kiddo has used in other instances where it's just taking a break, playing a video, playing some games, getting up, getting exercise, and actually having that uh, type of separation um, from the class. Um, recording audio for self-guided tour around a local historical site. I love this one as well. I've actually done that. Uh, one of the cool things that you can do with a lot of the historical areas uh, in Austin and other historic areas is that you can, um, if you're learning about a certain area, let's say the Alamo, you can then take these podcasts or audio or visual tours and, and really take a tour of the Alamo. So fun things like that as well. I'm just gonna check in with Josh one more time. How you doing, Josh? I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, good, 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 good. good. Yeah. <laughs> You're well, back. We um, missed you. I know. I miss being here. Go back to that one slide just previous to this one one minute because there was mm, no. I'll keep going back. I'm going. Oh, going. There we go. Yes. Okay. So this idea of virtual field trips. I know you started to hit on it too, but you know yeah. the thing of it is, and this is not just a COVID thing. This is just a. It, it's we see it a little bit more now than we what we have in the past, but this has been around for a long time. And sometimes these really rich learning experiences, we want to be able to take students to those. And when we can't take students to those, we have to find a way to bring those experiences into the kids. And when we have these kind of tech tools like Amiibo or like a stream cam or like in this case, a blue microphone or something like that, that I accidentally unplugged, you know, there are ways that we can bring these rich experiences to students when we can't take the students um, to the experiences. And, you know, it, from the teaching and learning perspective, it's almost as good, you know, if they can still this idea of immersive learning and uh, learning through experiences, we can provide these learning opportunities with just a little bit of uh, effort and having the right tech tools in place to do it. A hundred percent. Also with that Mevo camera, I think one of the funnest things, we talked a little bit about the, the student, um, the grandparents day where the students, where they'll be streaming it live. That's yeah. something that the Mevo, you're using the Mevo right now as a webcam. Yep. But Mevo can also be lure, uh, leveraged as a live streaming camera. 
right. where you can take this camera wirelessly, I know, wirelessly, and really start to engage communities and parents as well. So yes, you can record content with Mevo. You can, you can use the Mevo as a webcam. And now you're leveraging this from a community engagement standpoint. Maybe it's a pep rally that the parents can't get to or a cross country meet where you're like, those parents aren't running the five miles. So we'll put right. a camera in a couple of the stops so they can make sure and see where they're and check in with their kiddos. And these are streaming to very popular, um, in, whether it's Facebook Live, um, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram. I mean, they're, the platforms are endless and it's all able to link in with that. So it really is a fun way to leverage the community and parents as well as create content for teachers and students and give them those those virtual field trips as well. What I liked about the example that I had this morning for, from the Veterans Day Assembly is for me on the user and the experiencer um, the side of things, all I did was watch a YouTube video. It was, I just pulled up YouTube and that was it. Now on the other end, the content creator has an app, you know, on their iPad or on their Chromebook or whatever it is that they have, and they can, they can tap and they can create all these, the camera switching, and they can make it look like multiple cameras and different kinds of things. And again, it's not a lot of wizardry, even for the student creation side. And when we got off the phone, uh, when we got off that, um, the, uh, the uh, meeting this morning with the Veterans Day Assembly, I was able to talk to this person and, and we were just coming up with several different ways that we could use this, not just for student, or excuse me, for teacher creation, but also let the students get involved and put their hand to the plow and get involved in the technology and let, allow them to be content creators as well. Absolutely. And Sorry it's a really gambling. great way to reinforce lessons. So if you're teaching something and then they have to go and create something around that, it gives them not only the ability to leverage their creativity powers and go forth, but also gives them tools that will last for a really long time. Um, right. And just, I love when you're able to take something, take a lesson and still tell a story around it and like reinforce exactly what you're trying to hone in with that kiddo. So all right and that we have in the chat if that's okay yeah okay we got a question from jenny uh this was right after anna was talking about how she used audacity to record for tom trefer tops jenny asked i have used adobe spark and screencast omatic does the blue microphone work with these two softwares as well does it work with mac or ipad Yes. So iPad's a little tough and you do have to get an adapter because it is a USB connectivity and it's a USB 3.0. So you do have to get an adapter, but it works with all Mac, uh, Chrome, Windows, and it works with any type of platform, including Adobe Spark. So those are all, it's just a USB plug and play. It actually leverages uh, the audio on your PC, you just switch it over to blue microphone and it's ready to go. Now, one of the things, Kate, you touched upon was leveraging the blue audio uh, there's different things that you can do there's just the plug and play instant but that's kind of the the baby steps right so when you are start getting into this technology there's the plug and play aspect where you just go and you're just practicing and then the more you learn the more advanced you can become into that technology so you can start changing the gains and the way that the audio is being presented from a base level and a treble level. So there's lots of different things that you can do with the technology once you get comfortable with it, or it's just a plug and play ready to go as well. Same with Mevo, same with StreamCam, all of it. So uh, the next thing we were talking about is what were the tools that really helped these educators create the content, um, whether it's a flipped classroom, whether it's creativity uh, content, or whether it's individualized um, lessons or instruction. And that's really gonna have the audio, the video, and the editing. Now, from Lauren's perspective, she had that video on point. Uh, Anna's perspective, she had that audio on point. So what we talk about a little bit is what are the tools to create content so that it's not only seen clearly, but heard clearly as well. So the first one that I always touch on is microphones. Josh, you're experiencing the blue microphone. How do you feel like it really helps kind of balance out that teacher? So much of what a teacher does, we, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get an airport announcement right now. 
<laughs> of course. Yeah. So much of what a teacher does depends on having her ability to articulate exactly what it is she's trying to say to her audience, have it clearly understood, clearly communicated on the receiver end. And what happens a lot of times when um, when we're first getting started and doing kind of like a flipped uh, environment or we're st first starting to dabble on this, people will make an investment in a camera um, and then they forget about the audio portion of it. And that is that is really a misfortune because when we can make a little bit of an effort there, make an investment there, try to make something good um, for the for the learner for that experience, it's just so much more rich. It's so much more authentic. It feels a lot more like you're sitting face to face. And I think paying a little bit of extra attention to that goes a long way in terms of in terms of production. Remember, I started this conversation by telling you about the the, the lessons and the, the qualities that my dad tried to instill in me. And it is a lot of times that the effort that we're getting from our students is, is sometimes, believe it or not, it's symbolic of the effort that we're putting in. And when we can go set that bar a little higher for ourselves and say, you know what, I'm going to practice excellence in my delivery of instruction. And then hopefully I'm going to, I can then rightfully expect excellence back from, from the students as well. That's great. I will tell you one of the things I, I love microphones. I think that they're fantastic and they give the ability. I think one of the things that my, my son challenged with was being able to hear the content clearly. So mm -hmm. on the flip side of it, we did put in headsets here as well. There's lots of challenges as going back into a post COVID world. And one is that many of the children will be at different levels when they're going back into school. So many of them will probably want to watch the content multiple times in order to understand or pick up the nuances as well. Headsets give those students the ability to focus on their objective. Okay, there's going to be lots of kids that are in higher spelling than my son, but he needs to be focusing on his task at hand, and he needs the headset to block out the background noise and really be emerged into exactly what that teacher wants him to be focusing on. Um, while he was remote, headsets were really important for him to block out his five-year-old brother. Now it's 22 of his classmates. But so the headset is really transcended from both virtual and on-premise. Um, also, as he's learning to, he's also in Spanish, so he gets to learn it and he gets to use that headset to really reinforce his messaging and also practice his skills as well. So headsets on the flip side, as that content is being delivered to the student, I find to be very valuable. So it's kind of that delivering and the deliverer type of scenario. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, I didn't know if you wanted to jump in. Lauren was doing some Spanish lessons and she was talking about how, you know, uh, with the right webcam and the right microphone, you can practice the right uh, articulations. For someone that's learning a foreign language, I think that's real, that's obviously very important. I know we had a little bit of trouble connecting with Lauren, but anyway, that's, I'm sure that's what she would say anyway, you know. Yeah, I know from a, my standpoint, we have both ends of the spectrum. We have ones that are uh, learning English and we have others that are learning Spanish. So having the ability to really have the uh, interaction and dialect and um, taking that in is really great. Uh, and I do, again, I do love the, did you know, students between the ages of five and 14 are still developing cognitive auditory processing skills and therefore cannot decipher the full meaning of content if it is not heard correctly. Oh. They just make up their own filler words. They're like, well, I'm pretty sure she meant this. They never, you never want to have those kids fill in the holes for you. It wants to be crisp and clean. We want to make sure they hear that appropriately. The next thing is video, which I, I love. I'm all decked out with video here. I've got my webcam and my light and my audio. Um, but webcams, I feel, are, are a really important aspect of creating content, um, being visually pleasing. But Josh, I mean, you had Lauren's video. They were amazing. From a teacher perspective, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, again, I, you know, I think... I, this goes back to us trying to create a learning experience for the for the student that's going to last and it's going to, um, you know, have the, the right kind of, I hate to use the word professional, but I think that's that feels like the right word here, the right kind of professional quality that shows that we're making an invest in it. And, um, you know, I started this a million years ago with remember something called the flip cam 
uh, you know, everybody had, they were, they were $90 and they were worth about $10, you know, that was, it was junk, but it was the only thing that we had access to. And now we've come a very long way. And some of the cameras, like I see pictured here on this, on the slide from Logitech that have like the, the bar, like the beam and it has sound in it too. I, I'd love to hear, I've seen those around. I haven't been able to play with one yet, but you know, those are the kinds of things that can bring in that distance audience. Now we have what we call the click and the brick. So you have your click students who are remote and, you know, we want to be able to connect with them in a, in the same kind of meaningful way that we do with our brick students right here in the classroom. And I think having the right web webcams is obviously a, a major uh, piece of that puzzle. Oh, you're muted, uh, Carolyn. I love that. Um, yeah. Webcams, I, I think, are really great from just a production value. I think I liked Kate's value, um, comment when she's like, <laughs> we've got kids watching professional YouTubes made by their peers. You know, teachers, we've got to make, be able to create that same content. That's, that's, that's on point. Right. Um, and the tools to do that are things that we can repurpose from existing uh, exposure to COVID. So we've had that exposure to webcams from a remote per now we can use these same tools or we can get new audio or whatever it looks like in order to expand that footprint. Classroom cameras are really interesting though, because even though you may not be using it again with that click scenario, it does repurpose into what we talked a lot about before. And that is going to be those virtual field trip experiences or those uh, parents day conversations or grandparents day or uh, having service members for veterans day there's all these different use cases that can really build in and open up a massive world to the students that maybe are not necessarily as exposed to those or aren't able to have the exposure at just at their school but through virtual um, learning or virtual uh, uh, virtual field trips, it gives them that capability to do that. And these are kind of that all in one, the classroom solutions that we have, this is showing that meetup camera, the meetup camera is an all in one video, audio and speakers. So microphone speakers, um, camera all in one solution that you can just deploy plug and play USB, super, super easy. Um, no fancy bells and whistles. It gives you everything you need uh, with one USB plug. So those are some of the cool tools that we have from a video standpoint. Now, editing is my weakness. I'm not going to lie. Um, I really have to rely heavily on one of my favorite people, Julia, who is our education marketing when it comes to editing. Um, because I just want to keep everything in. Yeah, that's it. No, but really it's the it's having the necessary tools to actually edit those that content. And the tools are going to be things like mice um, and keyboards. And why those things are important is it just increases the precision. So if you want to be at the 28 to not the 29, doing that on a trackpad could be somewhat annoying and frustrating. So it gives you the tools to be a lot more precise and a lot, um, a lot faster when you're doing those type of editing. Uh, we had a really great conversation with one of the professors at, in Chicago at the University of Chicago, uh, Illinois. And she was telling me, she goes, look, I, this is what I do for a living. And the only thing that I cannot live without is my Logitech mouse. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to be using that from here on forward. So those type of tools really do help enable the editing aspect of the videos and the content to make sure that you're able to post it, and not spend all night or evening doing it. it. It can push you through that pretty easily. Did I miss anything, Josh? I just have to say how much I love the crayon. The oh, I do love the crayon. I, I, it's such a nerd alert for me, but I just really geek out over that. It's for those of you who don't know, it's the it's the Logitech stylus for iOS uh, or for iPad OS, and it's it's just such a great little tool. And I'm I don't know if it works on other platforms too. I, that's what I use. Just, just the iPad. It's just it's just a great little product. It's super fun. I I enjoy it as well. And wow. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because it does give a lot of, and, and that's a really cool tool for fine motor skill development as well. If you have iPads deployed through your pre-K to three or even above, um, it does give the capability of doing that tracing and that whole fine motor skill scenario. Um, 
and you know you can do a lot of uh, lesson plans around okay now go home and practice this and you can see the students work from home without having to really do too much with that but yeah. yeah and as much as I embrace the the digital age and tech integration I think those fine motor skills with handwriting are still it's, they're critical especially k12 I mean we really have to exercise those and to have you know a stylus like the crayon I think is a great way to leverage the tech integration that we believe in uh, and then also uh, tap into those ideas of those uh, fine motor skills that are time tested and proven that, that we we know are going to last and they're going to be around for a long time. Absolutely. All right. So this is going to be the discussion and Q&A portion. I'm going to bring, I think, Kate back up. Here I am. Hi, Kate. I'm here. <laughs> so I've seen a number of questions that have come through. Um, Emily Barber asked, can you list the devices you recommend for best audio and video? Um, so video, we're going to really gear towards what you're looking to do in the platform that you're looking at. The stream cam that Lauren used, and I believe Josh is using right now, it is a USB-C connectivity. So why is that important? Because you're taking up a USB-C port. Now with MacBooks, that's perfect because you only have USB-Cs. <laughs> But for other platforms, you may only have one USB-C, so you may need to make sure that you're doing something like a USB 3.0, which would be a different webcam. I'm using a Brio webcam right now. It is a USB um, 3.0, so it's no problem. It's a plug and play. Then also understand what you're gonna be using that webcam for. The stream cam is really designed to create content. Um, you're able to flip that from a portrait mode to a landscape mode. So there's lots of different features and functionalities with the stream cam from Logitech that give you the capability of actually creating content, what, no matter what the platform is. Um, but there's other options available just depending on your needs. And you can honestly, if you were using a webcam um, for virtual learning, you can repurpose one of those and just start practicing. And as you see your needs develop, move up to higher grade webcams uh, that may fit the bill of what you're looking to uh, accomplish in your classroom. Um, audio, I'm sorry, so audio blue microphones. I believe Josh, you're using, is it a, 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 a blue nano? A yeah, blue it's, the, it's the Yeti nano, it's the little one. And yep. I'm in love with this thing. Um, I, I wanted to pick it up and show it earlier, but I, I, when I picked it up, I unplugged it. But what I was going to say is there's a button on the back that changes the pattern. So it, well, the way I have it right now, it's, yes, it's positioned so that the microphone is only picking up right in front of my face. And that's perfect for doing this kind of thing. But imagine if you wanted to have students sitting around that around a table and talking around one mic, you can tap you tap one button. I got a lot of people in the background. You can tap one button on the back of this microphone and it changes the pattern. So it's not picking up right in front of your face. Face, It's picking up all the way around in a 360, which is wonderful for you if, if you want to have kids sitting around all contributing into a podcast or some kind of discussion or whatever. But it's one microphone that can cover both situations, which I think is great, it was especially with limited budgets. You know, who's got money to go buy six and seven microphones? This one microphone will do the job of both of those scenarios. I think you being in the airport is a great demonstration of that kind of focus. Yeah, I'm there's a lot actually. happening behind me. We, yeah. we really don't hear much. So oh, I'm good. maybe distracting you, but we don't hear too much on this Well, side. there's a marching band behind me, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. And then again, for just entry level, there is that snowball. It's a very mm -hmm. small um, entry level a um, microphone that you can get to just practice or start your practice or see how much you like to create. Um, but then it goes all the way up to the Blue Yeti X. So it's a huge, awesome USB microphone with multiple features and functionalities and a whole bunch of software that you can manage and do fun things with too. All right, another question. So what, We've talked about a number of different types of cameras. So what would, can you do kind of a basic rundown of the difference between maybe like a webcam or a streaming cam versus some other kind of cameras that you might use for content creation? Yeah, so um, Josh is using the Mevo today, I believe as a webcam. And that is actually something created for live streaming. So it has a lot more frames per second. So that's taking a high flash, 
frames per second in order to stream the content live, but it has a lower, like a, it's not a 4K. My webcam right now that I'm using is actually a 4K and has super high frame per second. It is not transmitting in 4K, it defaults to whatever um, the platform we're using at the time. However, if I had a 4K application, I could record in 4K and then transmit or upload a video if it was able to be uploaded in that. Most of the time, we're just going to be looking at a 1080p, which is pretty normal for any type of platform, including YouTube or anything that would be an uploading platform scenario. Um, but what you're really going to want to look at is if you're creating content that frames per second, you want to try and set it for as many frames per second as you can. So nothing's missed from a visual aspect of it. And you're going to see that in some of the higher end webcams. So like a C920, um, a C920, a C930E, or a Brio or a Streamcam. And those are some of the, the scenarios that you can look at. I think Kate, one a, a really great scenario that we might be able to follow up with is a list of some of the speeds and speeds of webcams because a lot of people think, well, a webcam is a webcam. Not so much, but it, we can start seeing some of the, uh, the differences in the models. Yeah, and that's some of the, Kim, oh wait, who asked it? Someone asked, oh, Shirley asked if we could provide a list of specific products. Yes, we will Absolutely. make sure to get out a list of some of these questions in a follow-up email. We'll have some specs in there too, so you can kind of look over some of the stuff yourself. I know it can get a little tech, like tech specy sometimes, so yeah. that'll be helpful. Yes, um, absolutely. Let's see, I'm still, I'm just going over, going over some of the questions. And I, I just noticed that Kim had popped in. Kim, I didn't know if you want to unmute. You talked about the easy setup. That was a it was a cool thing that you discussed when in uh, in our preparation. I didn't know if you wanted to unmute and share. Sure, sure. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah, it sounds um, great. Oh, good, good. Um, so one of the great things that I noticed about, and I'm using the stream cam. That's the one that I'm demoing. Uh, the, wonderful features about it is it really is just plug and play like there's really no hard setup there's no no difficulties with it at all you just plug it in and play um that's one of the things i appreciated most also that you could do both the portrait and the landscape and i believe carolyn mentioned this is the only camera on the market that can do that where you could do both modes yeah so that's pretty cool i also said <laughs> and i'm going to add to it here because I, I put it in the comments, uh, the C port is newer for some people. So I actually had to get a converter for my laptop in order to use, but again, not a big deal, tiny, tiny little adapter that I had to get, yep. but it is newer for some people, but it is on many of the Chromebooks. So for students use, again, still just an easy plug and play, yeah. really quick, fast setup. Now, one thing I will bring up uh, to piggyback off Kim's ease of use and kind of that methodology that there can be introductory to content creating all the way to moving yourself up to like an advanced content creator is that we do include in the stream cam a software option called Logitech Capture. Uh, what Capture does is you're actually able to run like two stream cams at the same time or two webcams at the same time so that you can film from different angles and then try and edit that or piece that together or even just upload it as one piece and, then, and there's no need to edit at all. You just record it within this, this software platform. Now, there's other really simple ways. Uh, someone actually, I think, was asking what platform do you record in or what that platform do you record your audio in? So we mentioned Audacity, but there, was, there will be some times I just record myself in Zoom, upload it to the cloud, and send it over to the individual that needs to play it. So there's just a lot of options where you don't have to get super technical and a lot of... Um, editing softwares, you can use very simple items or softwares in order to create. But Karen, that's actually, and I'm, that's, I'm sorry, it's Kim, I'm jumping in again, but um, how useful do you think that could be for a teacher to, who's doing, let's say, a science lesson and they want to have one camera on themselves while they're explaining it and a second camera on the experiment, whatever the experiment is, and being able to move between those multiple cameras. And that's a, just such a great tool to be able to do that with. 
Well, yeah. and yeah, the <laughs> thing that I love the most, Kim, about the Logitech equipment is it brings the perfect harmony between that professional quality and the ease the ease of use that a teacher uh, or a student can do it because let's face it a teacher or a student probably doesn't have time to go to film school you know we're not gonna we're not gonna have time to you know we don't have those skills but we do want to have that great quality and so that's one of the things I've, I've loved about what Logitech has done for us is it's allowed me as a regular Joe Schmo teacher uh, to create rich content uh, that looks beautiful and I don't have to have a degree in film studies to do it you know it's it's really nice i uh so really piggybacking off of your being able to have multiple cameras um the mevo as well we talked a little bit about all the versatility of mevo mevo has the webcam option but you can actually set up it for three webcams mm -hmm. we have an amazing influencer um his name is evan and he is a classical musician and he does virtual music lessons. So he has three Mevos set up, one on him, one on his upper hand and one on his lower hand. So you can actually see how he's playing and it does a really great job. But then again, you can take that same methodology just as Kim mentioned and put it towards a science experiment or understanding, um, I, I love this one. If you guys have never done the, the owl palette dissection, you have one on the teacher and one on the pellet as she's dissecting. It's always fun to see that too. So lots of really great curriculum in order to do that with. All right, any other questions, Kate, or should we move on and let Josh take over the last couple pieces of this? Yeah, um, I'm not seeing any more questions coming in in the chat and then I can actually take that next slide. Oh, wonderful, perfect. Yeah, that, one, that one's for me. So we. We're, we're so glad you all were able to join us today. I hope you found the content that we talked about useful. I hope you got some great ideas about how you might be able to, as yourself, if you're a teacher, get a little more creative in the way that you create content, or if you're more on the technical side, kind of help assist teachers in having the right tools for that. So at Trevera, we really want you to be able to try that stuff out for yourself. So we've worked with Logic Tech to get some demos set up. If you are interested in trying anything that we talked today, so keyboards, headsets, mics, cameras, stuff like that. We want to be able to get that to you. So you can either take take your phone, scan that QR code to go, get to our demo form. You can follow that link. Otherwise, we're going to send that link in the follow-up email as well. But we'd love to get you guys some tech so you can try it for yourself. And with that, I think unless anyone has more questions, I'm going to launch our exit survey that you can take. It really helps us get a good idea on what you guys thought of the session. And Kate, what it's, it's, Kate, it's Kim again. I'm so sorry. I'm just Thank jumping you. in because the QR code is behind the window for many of us, uh, the window that has that's on the right. So you can actually move that window and see the QR code. I was just sorry. Sorry All right. for interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so you can go ahead and take that exit survey. It really helps us get an idea of what you thought of the session and, if, and help us figure out if you want some more follow-up on anything that we talked about today. Otherwise, thank you guys all so much for being here. If you love your coffee, get your pumpkin spice latte. They're cool, okay? <laughs> stop, stop judging people who like pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> now all the Christmas stuff is out. You can do peppermint mochas. Peppermint mochas. Peppermint mochas. Oh, oh, gingerbread please. chai. Oh. oh, I've never had that. See, we've I do. Got, we've got some ideas cooking for what kind of coffee you can get. Peppermint it's Americano. Oh, now, that's, now we're yeah. all craving it. Yeah, really. Yeah. I could definitely use a little two o'clock coffee. Three o'clock. Wait, do I have a call <laughs> after this? Can I run up and grab some? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys so much. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Th thank you. Bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs>